Okay, so I have the amazing Deborah with me today. And Deborah is an alumni. She's a graduate of the Academy of Yogic Sleep. So thank you for being here, Deb. Is it okay if I call you Deb? Yes. Okay. Deb is better than Debbie. So yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, I'm I'm really um I, I was just sharing with you, um, but now that we're official and recording, um, I was sharing with you how excited I am to share your story because I love the way that you've integrated Nidra into what you're doing. And it seems like from my perspective, it's really infused in all of the aspects of your service and what you're offering and bringing your community to the table. And so, um, and I also know your story um, in terms of the challenges and the things that came up for you throughout the course of the training and beyond and how Nidra has sort of been like a, a container in holding space for those. And so I know, I know, I know that what your experience was is going to be very similar for other people um, considering joining this container. And that's why I really wanted to speak with you. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So tell um, the people listening, maybe share a little bit about um, first and foremost, how you found the Academy of Yogic Sleep and how this training came to be for you. Well, you and I have connected for years. I found you on social media and through Allo Yoga, and I just felt an instant connection with you. Mm -hmm. um, your personality, your spirit is just, I can relate so much. I feel like you're so authentic, so authentic and that's what I appreciate. That's and, a baby um, puppy in the background, you guys. So yes, cute. Fathering <laughs> big sister. Matt, no, thank you. Um, and I remember asking you, are you going to do a yoga nidra training? Because I know that you trained under Jana and I was so excited. And I loved your nidras so much. They were so cosmic and they just do something to your, your body. And like, you're just transported to this. I can't even explain it. It's very magical. And I remember asking you if you were going to do a nidra and you said it's kind of real. Hold on one sec. <laughs> She's got a baby puppy. So, you know, it needs a lot of love and attention over there. Okay, I'm back. Um, okay. So, yeah, you said the Nidra was going to be coming soon. And I was so mm -hmm. excited and I couldn't wait. And then the offering came and I just jumped on board. I didn't care what it took, how I was going to get there. I was doing it because I was yeah. waiting for it for so long. Yeah. Um, and Nidra transformed my life and I know how magical and transformational it can be. And I really wanted to embody that so that I can bring it back to my community. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love the way that we connected and it felt so like wonderfully real to me as well from my perspective, you know, and it's, and this happened with you and Abby and maybe one other person in the training, but I just felt like we had already had this relationship digitally before entering the container together and that to me and then and then we continue on after and that's what yeah. I love I love this this connection with you um yeah. and it feels like it'll be there forever you know yeah. Yeah. um yeah. which is really cool and special um so I felt that too from my end of things yeah um so talk to um talk to everyone listening maybe share what was it like inside of Academy of Yogic Sleep for you? What were some of the awarenesses that you had? What were some of the, the teachings or the knowings that were revealed to you throughout this process? I think the, the most important thing for me was trust. Trusting mm -hmm. in the process, trusting in what's happening, that the journey is going to unfold the way it's meant to unfold and just let it be, let it go. And just to fully embody it, to not let myself hold back. You know, I remember when I first started practicing Nidra, um, I couldn't get through it. I was not trusting of my body, how I was feeling, and I would, didn't really feel safe in my mind. But once I learned to just let go and really trust the practice and know that it's going to make a profound difference in my life, then I really began to embody it. And I have to tell you, it's made such a difference, um, not only in my confidence, but how I show up in the world and how I show up in my community. And I can feel really 100% sure of what I'm saying about the practice and how I'm sharing it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, trust is a big thing for me. And I really just had to learn to let go and just 
whatever I was feeling to know that I was safe, safe in that practice, safe in my body and safe in my mind with whatever was coming up, that there was nothing that was going to um, invade that circle of protection for me, that I was perfectly okay. And I just, you know, I've learned to trust a lot in my life recently over the past few years. And so that's a really big word for me. And um, Huge. yeah. 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 Thank you for sharing that. I know that you've experienced a lot of that and, and it's hard when you don't trust to feel like you're out of control because it's, it's hard to release that, you know, and, yeah. and that's such the beautiful piece of Nidra is that when you feel safe enough to let go and to release then, and only then your nervous system can finally downregulate itself. And we can finally start to experience those deeper places where we can drop into theta and Delta and our bodies let go our minds yeah. are able to then transcend and so and it's I, such a beautiful feeling it's mm -hmm. like no other feeling in the world that you receive in your body it really is truly just a really it's like you're really being held by this safe container yeah. and I, I just can't explain it any other way it's a beautiful yeah. beautiful experience yeah, that that word for you, uh, from my perspective, and what I saw as you go as you went through this container was yes, you you leaned into trust, and you had to let go of a lot of things. There was a lot of stuff that came up for you, and it was beautiful oh, yeah. to watch you move through that, um, yeah. and to support you energetically, you know, from afar, just holding space and holding the container for you, and to watch you keep going, and to and it, the next, and then okay, I'm struggling with this, okay, and then moving on, and then moving on, and now to see where you are, what I see in you now is the leader that you've become. I think that's the biggest piece that I've seen in your transformation is when you first came into the container, I didn't feel necessarily that energy from you, but now mm -hmm. I feel your leadership and I feel it through your service. Yeah. And that's what I love. That's what I love about you and your yeah. offering. So maybe you could share now, you know, what, how is this being infused into your offering? What, what you're, you know, what you're bringing to your community and your service um, so in what I, ways is this impacting you? Yeah, I really want to help women that have gone through trauma. I want them to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that you don't have to stay stuck in that victim mode. Um, many people don't know my story, um, that I was in a very abusive marriage for a long time. I was homeless for a long time. I've had a lot of chronic illnesses. It's been a very wild journey since childhood. And for a long time, I stayed stuck in that victim mode and I used it as an excuse for my life. And it wasn't until I really started to take a look internally, do the work and see that there is light at the other side and I don't have to stay stuck in the darkness and that I found myself again. And I want other women to see that you can find yourself again. You can find who you truly are and that you can empower yourself. And then in turn, you can share that light with the world and empower somebody else. And that's really important to me. Um, it took me a long time. I mean, I'm 52. So it's been a journey to get here, but I am so proud of myself. And I am so amped to share this with other women that are going through trauma or that victimhood mode. And yeah, just let them shine their light and to not be afraid to be seen again. Because I, for a long time, was afraid to be seen and heard because of shame and no longer, man, I am here and I'm going to help you. I'm going to be authentically who I am. I'm going to share my story. I'm going to shine bright. And that's just how it is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Um, yes. Yes. I'm celebrating you. I yeah. feel your energy. I feel that. I know yeah. you're going to help so many women. Deb. Um, yeah. It's so beautiful. And thank you for sharing that with me. I, I didn't know that you were homeless. I knew that you were in an abusive relationship and yeah. I, I have a little bit of that in my past as well. And so, yeah. um, you know, hearing that extra layer of, you know, not having, um, that foundational component of being a human, of having a safe home to live in and to yeah. exist in that, that even more emphasizes the, the trust. And, you know, yeah. like if you don't have that, like everything yeah. else is out of alignment. So, yeah. um, that, that's a big deal. You've come a long way, longer than I knew, longer than I even knew. Yeah. And I, I feel it's really important because so many women hide the fact that they were either abused or they were homeless or they had an addiction. They're afraid to be seen and be, to be heard because they don't want to be judged. And I've been yeah. there. 
And it's okay to share your story and to be who you are because you're here in this world to work out your karma, to live your life. And you have gifts, whether you know it or not. And I just want women to know that it's safe and it's okay. And I'm here for you to hold space for you and to help you and hold your hand along the journey that, that everything is possible. I mean, I'm still a work in progress and I'm still getting to where I want to be, but I'm so, I've learned to be proud of the journey and be proud and appreciate and grateful for where I've come and what I've gone through. So, and Nidra has played a huge part of that. And the Academy of Yogic Sleep honestly has really, the most profound thing has helped me tap into my confidence and to become a leader. And that I'm so grateful for. Oh, I feel it and I see it and I see you and I've been watching you expand and that energy is so present. And, um, and I know it's just like the start. I know it's just the starting point for you. Yeah. Um, and you've got so much more to go. And I am so happy that you're sharing yourself and your soul because it's beautiful to see. It's beautiful to witness. And like, you're moving me to, you know, tears. Yeah. You're talking to you right <laughs> now. And, um, I'm, I'm celebrating all of your work and I, feel so grateful that you joined me for the first round, you know, all the bumps and all the things that I was working out in the background and behind the scenes and to have your energy there was consistent and supportive and loving. And so, um, yeah, it was a really beautiful, it was a beautiful, loving, supportive container. And I am grateful that I made friends to a community that I will connect with forever. Just really, really beautiful. It yeah. was very magical. I'm so grateful for you for that. So yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We had a great group. We had an awesome group. Yeah. Um, well, Deb, thank you. I can't wait to share this with our community. I know that your story is going to speak to so many women. And before we jump off, maybe just share your work now in the world, how people can reach out and work with you, what you're offering it is. Yeah. So I just um, started a website and with my services, it's called Wildflower Wellness. Um, and I offer meditation there privately. I offer yoga nidra and I also have an apothecary of ghee that I infuse with herbal medicine because I do have a background in Ayurveda and, um, I'm really excited about that. I've been making ghee for years and I'm excited to share that with the world and, yeah, I'm also working on workshops to help women that are going through hormonal changes through perimenopause and menopause, because um, mm -hmm. I feel like there's a real lack of that support out there for women and they can feel really alone during that time. So I want to be that container to hold space for them. So, Beautiful. Yeah. I got to get my hands on some of your ghee. I haven't tried it. I need I to try it. One. I will send you one on, on me, send me your information and I will mail it to you. Yeah. <laughs> I receive, I receive, I receive. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, you guys, um, check that out. Find her, check out her website. If you have questions for her, reach out to her. Um, Deb, your social, can you share that? Yeah, my social is uh, Debra Ellis uh, underscore 333. Great. Okay. Deb, yeah. I'm going to stop the recording. So stay on with me and everyone else. Thank you for joining us.